In this skills video, I'm just going to update our knowledge of proof structure with the new quantifier of the existential. And this impacts our proof structure quite a bit because it really tells us what we're really looking for to generate the show line. So let's look at this first example. Here I want to show there exists an x, fx, and gx. So what does that really mean? Well, it means that, well, let's just write this out. Uh, I want the full existential, fx and gx. But if I want to show that there is something that's an f and a g, what I really just want is I would just want to find something that is an f and something that is a g, where these things are the exact same. So I'm going to call these things alpha. Uh, you don't have to call them alpha. You can call them circle, square, triangle, whatever you want, or one, two, three. The point is, what I'm looking for is something such that I get f of something and g of the same thing. And if that's the case, then surely I can generalize to the claim there is something that is both f and a g, because that's all that is really required for an existential generalization. Now, if this is the case, uh, so if I succeeded, I could go up using an existential generalization. Now I just continue my proof structure, because if I'm looking for f alpha and g alpha, of course that means I'm looking for f alpha on its own and g alpha on its own, and then I could move up using uh, adj. And so that's what we're looking for, this and this. Now what is alpha? Alpha right now is undefined. We don't know what alpha is. It can actually be anything. It could be x, y, z, uh, I, J, K, and typically our derivation would sort of give us a clue somewhere along the line that we would suddenly know what alpha is and then I know what to solve for. And this really helps because if suddenly on the board, let's say down here, I got like F of A, then I can, would know that a really smart show line is to show G of A, because if I got G of A, then they are the same and I would be able to existentially generalize. In cases where you have multiple existentials, you need to be a bit more careful. So of course, it's the same story. I want this thing, um, but I need to break it down one step at a time. And so if I want this, this really just means that I want some f alpha and there exists a y g y. So alpha here is like a meta symbol. It essentially is a symbolic placeholder for any of the regular uh, name or variable letters in our system. And if I got this, then I could move up and existentially generalize. Now, how do I get this and? Well, we know that. That's f alpha, and also I need e y g y. And I could just go up this way using adj, just like I demonstrated here. Now, on this side, how do I get this existential y, g, y? Well, uh, what I'm really looking for is g of blank, because if I need to show that something is a g, well, I just need something that's a g. But be careful here, don't write alpha in here. If you write alpha in here, it means that this g has to be the same as this f, but it doesn't seem to be the case given our breakdown. So we don't want to say it's alpha, we actually want to say it's something else. So I call it beta. You can call it two. It doesn't matter. Now, some people might think here that alpha doesn't equal beta in that these things need to be different. But that's also not true. If it's the same, it doesn't matter. This just says I need to show that something is a G. And it doesn't say anything about this relationship to F. So if they're the same, great. If they're different, great. As long as I can successfully show that something is a G, and something is an F, I can just go up through this method and deliver my show line. So that's how you do proof structure in this case. So here's a final, uh, slightly more sort of busy example. Uh, so we'll just sort of go through it. So show this big thing. Okay, I'm not gonna write my first want here. I'm just gonna sort of pretend that I, I can sort of break this down immediately. So because this is a conjunction, I know that I want EX, GX, and I also need this ey bracket bracket fy and gy or there exists a z h z okay so i know i can do this and if i succeeded i would get what i wanted by just doing a simple adj now how do i get this left side that just requires some sort of g alpha and then i could existentially generalize to get what i wanted what about this messy side uh, well for this side i just take a big look at this 
and I realize that the main operator here is this existential, so that means what I'm looking for is some uh, instantiation of y, but remember, it doesn't have to be alpha. So I'm gonna write f beta and g beta. Whoops, uh, brackets, or there exists a z h z. So if I got this, I could then existentially generalize up. Now this is a disjunction, so that means I could just get f beta and g beta on its own, or I could get there exists a z h z on its own, and I could addition the other half. How do I get this? Well, this is just some h blank, as long as it's not alpha and it's not beta. I don't know, how about epsilon? Doesn't matter. So what about this side? Well, this is easy. Most of you don't even write this out anymore because it's clear that if I want the conjunction, then I just need either side, and that's just an ADJ. And if I got this, this would be an EG. So what this tells you is that this big ugly show line bottoms out at getting this one, getting these two, or getting this. And if I just got one of these two and my g of something, I could then just construct my show line by moving up the chain using this sort of proof structure. So this is how proof structure is impacted by the existential. It's not impacted by the universal, because remember, if you have the show line of a universal, you just do show line breakdown, and that's why you don't actually have to incorporate it into proof structure.